Hey, it's Mark. You might know me as Frog Boy on Instagram. Big comic book nerd. Wishing I was a comic book artist. But uh, the closest I can come to being a comic book artist is recreating some of these awesome comic book covers in acrylic paint on canvas. Kind of like this one I got in progress. I have gotten a few people that have reached out to me and said, hey, uh, how do you get the artwork on the canvas? Or what type of paint do you use? So I thought maybe I'd uh, make a video that shows a little bit more of the process and goes in detail about how I make these paintings. I'm not gonna go into everything. So if you have more questions, reach out to me. You can send me a message here. Uh, find me on Instagram, that's probably the easiest way, at Frogboy, or at my website, frogboy.com. And uh, for right now, I'm just gonna kinda go over the basics from start to finish on how I do one of these paintings. And uh, what a better comic to do than Captain America 110, Jim Starenko goodness. Look at Hulk bugging his eyes out there. He's like double the size of uh, Captain America, maybe triple the size of Bucky. But just a beautiful cover. And man, I wish I could draw like Starenko does. And I can't, but with a little bit of time, a little bit of patience, I can recreate this using acrylic paint on canvas. And maybe after watching this video, you might be inspired to do the same. So uh, let's get started. Here I'm getting the uh, artwork ready to transfer to the canvas. I use 24 by 36 inch gallery wrap canvas and I print out the artwork at full size. And uh, to get it to the size of the canvas, I tile it out in pieces, and tape it together Once it's all taped together, I uh, add transfer paper on top of the canvas. And this will just allow me to trace the artwork directly onto the canvas and get it as accurate as possible. It takes about several hours to get the artwork transferred. But this is what it looks like once I pull back the uh, transfer paper and the printed artwork. Now it's ready for painting. I like to use a liner brush and uh, that'll take away some of the shake when I'm painting these lines in. Getting those uh, nice clean smooth lines that makes my brain feel good but I need a little help to do that and that these liner brushes really help with that. I'm working with acrylic paint and it's watered down just slightly, just enough to help it flow, but uh, thick enough to, that it still gives decent coverage. And this is essentially like inking uh, the artwork. Now I try to get this as close as possible, of course, to the original artwork. But I do know that this isn't going to be the final pass for the artwork. It's more because I'm not uh, such a great artist. I want to make sure I capture this on the canvas to give me something to work with. If I went straight to color, I may lose a lot of this detail. I'm not confident enough in my abilities to just go straight into color. So I kind of ink it with acrylic paints here to get the artwork all set, get it as close as possible. And it's pretty time consuming, but it sure is fun to get into it and see all the details, see all the, the magic from the uh, original artist. But again, I'm gonna have to do this all over again. So if it's not a really solid black. I'm not too concerned about that, but I do want to try to get my details correct.
think I'm still using a liner brush here. And I don't, uh, I don't spend a lot of money on my paints or brushes. Uh, I'm sure there is a quality difference. And maybe as I get more experience in painting, I'll want to upgrade. But what I use, I just find what's inexpensive and uh, try to take care of them so I can use them a few times. But uh, you can get inexpensive brushes and paints that do the job fairly well. And then if you do screw up the brushes, maybe I don't uh, clean them right away or that type of thing. I, I know it's kind of wasteful, but at least I don't feel like I wasted a ton of money on a brush that I ruined. You can just pull out another one. Here we've got the artwork all completed. It was fun doing those nice straight lines. A little nerve wracking, but again, that liner brush really helps keep everything steady. What I've done here also is taken a sponge and erased all of the original blue artwork that was transferred from the transfer paper. So now it's fairly clean. There may be a few spots here and there that still have that blue artwork, but it just washes right off once the paint is dry. Time to start painting. Just try to block in some of the larger colors. You can see then the uh, nice yellow background and start with the type. Uh, not a lot of fancy shading, maybe a little bit of variation in that yellow in the background. It's a little bit lighter right around the hole, and darker as it spreads out. More solid colors. I typically go from light to dark, but uh, then I'll go back over the lights and then the darks again and go back and forth and probably spend a little bit more time on it than I need to, but it looks good, hopefully, when I'm done. There you can see I've got three different uh, shades of green that I'm working with. And it's hard to tell, but I've added some highlights and where the natural shading from Stranko's art is. I made it darker, just kind of followed his lead for where he felt like the light sources are. And I might might vary it a little bit. The color on the uh, original comic, it's a little bit different, but I try to use Storenko's art as a guide. You can see I've dropped in some highlights a little bit on Captain America's outfit. Added some highlights on, on the shield, some fun stuff. As I said, once uh, I'm happy with the color, I need to go back over all the black again. And this is where I take a little bit more time. But uh, because there's paint underneath it, and I've got the original black artwork as a guide, it really makes some nice, rich blacks. This is where it all starts to come together. It's really satisfying to see the artwork just pop. Get these nice rich blacks and that shading uh, I always or I typically will look back and say oh I probably should have added more highlights or gone a little darker with the shadows uh, that's the downside to the process that I use but again uh, hopefully I'll become more confident in my skills with uh, paint in the future and can tighten it up but either way I'm Still really like how it turns out. So this is the final piece. Just dropped a varnish on there. You see a little bit of a shine. And the varnish, it really makes all the uh, the colors where there's some matte finish and gloss finish, it evens it all out. Now everything's glossy. It really is a pleasure to go into so much detail from the original art. 
just makes you appreciate how great these artists were. And Storenko just was a master on this one. And here it is. This is the final painting. Boy, if you could smell that, the varnish is just popping off of it. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Here's what we started from. Captain America 110 by Jim Steranko. What a beauty of a comic. I uh, did some differences to the color, but for the most part, really tried, especially with the line art, to keep his original art. And I'm super happy with it. So now the question is, well, who gets this painting? Well, there's somebody special out there that I know has had a rough year, just like a lot of us have in 2020. But you are loved, Wayne, from Squirrel Madness Comics. Wayne, Daniela, turn around and give her a big hug. Because she hooked you up with this. And I'm so happy this is going to be hanging on your wall. And I know 2021 is going to be a wonderful year for you. So, we love you, brother. Happy New Year to everybody. And thanks for watching.